And as we know, for those of us um, who look at these things, uh, if you're long Japanese tourism in Cairns at the moment, you're in a very different space to if you're exposed to the mining services industry in Rockhampton. And in the same way as there's very large differences geographically between industries, there's also a very big difference between what's occurring right now in 2011 and what's taking place into the future. You have a conversation with people in the resources sector, uh, attached to the resources sector, not just in coal, but in LNG and CSG, and they are on a different planet. They talk a different language. They have a different sense of urgency, a different view about where the world's moving over the next period of time compared to many other people. So at the moment, what you've got in Queensland is an economy that has a huge investment surge locked into it that's beginning to flow through parts of the economy and broadening out. And what you see in the budget is an attempt to enjoin more parts of the state, more parts of the economy, more industries in that prosperity that's going to flow through from that investment surge. There's a reason why a dominant conversation with those in the property sector in Queensland in recent times is one about the struggles that the industry has been facing. Yet you've got Glenn Stevens giving speech after speech after speech saying he's got his finger on the trigger. Now, Glenn Stevens um, gave a speech in Brisbane last Wednesday where he pointed to some of those reasons. There's got to be a joining between the disconnect that's apparent between what Glenn Stevens says as the governor of the Reserve Bank over here and what you're all saying about the impact uh, and the conditions in the property sector at the moment. And that is that investment surge that's locked and loaded and coursing through the veins of the Australian economy. What you see in Queensland at the moment, to give you some context to why am I talking to you confidently about an investment surge and what's about to happen next, well, the best evidence is what's just happened. Over the last 12 months, um, it's fair to say that the Queensland economy has faced many challenges, most particularly the effect of natural disasters on key sectors like resources, like coal mining in particular, like tourism, uh, like agriculture, was pretty stark. The losses in production in mining were just a tick under $6 billion. In agriculture, $1.4 billion, as particularly bananas and avocado crops were taken out. And also in tourism, around $400 million and a huge perception issue to overcome. Just briefly, I think it's worth pointing out that the challenge we have as a state promoting our tourism industry over the next little while is if you can imagine what it would take to get uh, the, uh, the worldwide resources of CNN, CNBC, BBC and other global channels to get them to stop their coverage for 72 hours and to run a 72-hour infomercial on how great Queensland was, then that's the reverse challenge for us. Because earlier this year they ran a 72-hour story about how buggered the state was and the perception issues that we have to overcome are in those dimensions. But that loss of production meant that the economy grew at a flat line last year. That growth was, in fact, wiped out at 0%. But underneath that, business investment last year was 13%. Right through the period of time in the natural disasters, broader-based private investment was increasing and increasing solidly in Queensland. The result nationally was 4%. What that tells you is that that business investment surge is very resilient. The forecast for the coming year is 27% and then 21% the year after. Western Australia is at around 15% next year. The nation moves up from around 45 through to 16% next year as the effect of what's occurring, particularly in Queensland and Western Australia, goes right through the nation's economy. So come back to the point about what the central challenge is. That is, it's different now to what's about to happen. That's why one of the major initiatives in the budget was to seek to go to those industries that are at the moment feeling the pinch and to make interventions, injections in those industries in order to assist them through this period of time. But I, for one, am entirely confident that the conversation we're going to be having in this room and indeed right around Queensland in 12 months' time is going to be fundamentally different to the conversations that we're having here at the moment. That's why we put in an $85 million package for major events for tourism, because it's not just a marketing effort. We have to do that. We're putting in the money to do that. That's going around Australia and around the world right as we speak at the moment. But we also need new reasons, new product, new attractions for people to come. And we know from things like the Gold Coast 600 that event-based tourism is a powerful mechanism for bringing people into the state and for ensuring that we give them the sort of experience that wants them to come back again and again. So tourism is important. It's going to face up to a structurally higher Aussie dollar in the next period of time. Uh, 
it's a, probably almost a moot point to debate where the Aussie dollar is going to be, but there's no doubt it's going to be structurally higher by a quantum than its sort of post-float average of the low 70s. Uh, whether it's at a dollar, whether it's at a dollar ten, or whether it's at 95, tourism is going to face a very different set of circumstances over the next couple of years, and that's why that events, events package is so important. But of direct relevance to everyone in this room, of course, uh, is the changes that we're making in order to fund a stimulus injection into the property development market at this period of time. The government's proposing a $10,000 Queensland building boost that will go to all new construction from the 1st of August through to the 31st of January. There's a couple of points which are important to make about the way in which we've designed that intervention. The first point is obviously its timeliness. Uh, going short and sharp and substantial is important for changing people's decisions and to actually moving people. Uh, if it's an open-ended scheme, then of course no one's motivated to get in and act. Uh, people just defer a decision into the future. It's got to be substantial in order to change people's mind and $10,000 obviously uh, is a substantial amount of money that for, for anyone thinking of getting into the property market of course is a proposition for them to consider seriously. For first home buyers in particular, it means that given we have zero stamp duty for those purchasing houses under $500,000, mortgage duty has been abolished. It means that you can be in a new home by Christmas with $17,000 in your back pocket from the state government. That's a powerful marketing mechanism for those of you in the industry to ensure that as many people as possible can take up this initiative in order to stimulate the market. But it's also there for those that commit to building contracts in that six month period of time. And we know, and you know only too well, that one of the great challenges over the last couple of years post the GFC is the way in which credit uh, metrics have changed from banks in particular, and therefore the commitment uh, to the, the design of the policy to ensure that contract commitments count towards accessing the grant is also important in building up the support for projects in order to secure finance. It's also there for newly established homes, that is, those that haven't been occupied. One of the challenges is existing stock, particularly here on the Gold Coast. And so in the first instance, this is going to be a market clearing mechanism. We can't stimulate the market unless we actually clear the market and get it moving in the first place. So it's not just those that are unbuilt, it's those that are built but not yet occupied. And they will also be eligible as we seek to clear the market, then secure new commitments for new projects, and obviously for those projects that are underway, generate support for those projects at the moment. So that's the dimensions of the design of the scheme. It's, of course, going to be subject to wild and, um, and uh, pretty spirited debate for, by everybody. But the government, in doing the scheme as it has, has concentrated on providing an intervention that's timed and designed to provide the most support to the industry at this period of time. We will also change from the 1st of August the previous uh, stamp duty concession that was in place for established housing for the principal place of residence. When we make that change, when we make that change, it will still be the case that at each and every price point for all houses, whether you're an investor, a first home buyer or otherwise, Queensland will have the lowest stamp duty of all states of mainland Australia. In fact, we'll have the lowest stamp duty of all states of Australia, save for homes above $950,000 in Tasmania. Uh, if there are homes above $950,000 in Tasmania, then they are going to be competition for us, but ultimately I think that's something uh, that can be put into perspective. The point to make is, when this change is made, we will still have the lowest stamp duty regime in Australia. And over the next six months, beyond that, not only will we have the cheapest, but we'll have the $10,000 that go on top of it. As I said, for first home owners, that's $17,000. But please understand that the $10,000 applies not just for first home buyers, but for everybody. Whether you're a second, third or fourth home, whether it's your home or whether it's an investment home, it's all about stimulating extra supply into the market. The point to make then is that this supply is of course needed at this point in time, not only for the benefit it provides to the industry, but because given what we expect to happen over the next couple of years, bringing on more supply into the housing market is vitally important at this point in time. The problem and the challenge in Australian housing markets is not a, a problem of demand, it's a problem of supply over the last generation. And going towards the supply equation in increasing supply rather than just supporting existing house market prices, going towards the supply trick by focusing it on only new builds and not existing homes is the policy intent that the government's pursued. At its core then, this is about recognising 
that everything that you've all been saying as an industry uh, needs attention, it needs this injection and it needs a stimulus. Now, of course, I'm sure there's going to be some debate about some of the finer points of the design and other people will contest parts of the package, but the government has done this in a way uh, by looking at those policy goals that we wanted to pursue. On the Gold Coast, we know uh, that there is uh, that same duality operating that I've been talking about at a statewide level. Imagine the Gold Coast without the $435 million spend on the $1.76 billion Gold Coast University Hospital this year. Imagine it without the $135 million on the billion dollar plus Gold Coast Rapid Transit project that will really take place, begin to ramp up over the next 12 months with the contract signed in May this year. Imagine also uh, the Gold Coast without the new Metricon Stadium where the Cabinet will meet later this morning. The government's been injecting money into the Gold Coast in order to support it at this time. We know that tourism and property counts for the Gold Coast, and this budget has at its core those commitments to building on the Gold Coast, to making sure that we go to those sectors like tourism, like the housing market, in order to provide the sort of support that's needed. I'm entirely confident that in 12 months' time, a conversation such as this won't be called a revival forum, but it'll be called a survival forum. A survival forum because it's going to be a wild old ride in the economy over the next 12 months. We're set to go from zero to hero, and anyone who would like to contest the fact uh, can look at the business investment that occurred last year, look at the crazy money that some of the people in the resources sector have already locked in place, and know and understand that we're about to go through a step change here in the Queensland economy, which gives me every motivation to work to win the next election, because I don't want to have to sit here in 12 months' time listening to my opposition counterpart claim complete credit for the forecast that I just gave you. Thanks very much for your time.